All right, let's continue our discussion of radicals and take a look at the connection between the radical notation and the exponential uh, notation that we are used to from before. So we go back and forth. a to the power 1 half is the same as writing square root of a. a to the power 1 third is the same as cube root of a. You should be able to recognize this as square root and that square root as a to 1 half. Cube root, same as power one-third. This will allow you to do a lot of different problems. Remember now, when you have a negative exponent, you make it a positive exponent first, and then rewrite it. So if you have 1 over a to the power one-half, that means what? It's square root of 1 over a. It's the square root of the whole inside quantity, the base. a to power two-fifths. So now we no longer have 1 over something. When that happens, that 2, the exponent of 2, stays inside with the a squared. And the index is the 5. Everybody see that? Denominator. So when you have a fractional exponent, the denominator is the index. And a squared is what goes inside as a radicand. A squared is a radicand, and 5 is the index. So a to the 7 halves, remember how we said that. 7 halves. The 7 is the exponent that stays with the base on the inside in the radicand, and the square root symbol is the base of 2. We also saw that we can write 7 halves as a mixed fraction, a to the 3 and a half, which is a to the 3rd and square root a. So square root of a to the 7 is the same as a to the 3rd times square root of a. So this allows you to simplify roots, simple roots. So 2 is the index here. But remember, when it's the index of 2, we don't write it, right? We just say it's square root. So again, 2 is the um, index, and a to the 7 is the radicand. All right, so now why don't you try writing it in radical notation? Did you get that? What if I give you a radical notation? You change it to exponential notation. This will be good practice for you. So negative is going to stay on the outside. You have 5 to the what? 5 to the 2 thirds. The 3 is the index, which is the denominator of the exponent. And 2 is the numerator of the exponent and the negative stays on the outside. Square root 49, when there is no index written, that means it's power of 1 half. So here we have 1 over a is our radicand, and square root is the 1 half power. 8 to power negative 1 fifth, so 1 over 8 to the power 1 fifth, so 5 is our index. Now remember here, negative x plus y, the whole thing is your radicand, that's your base then. And the exponent is 1 third for cube root. It's very, very important you understand this. If you do not, please rewind, go back, make sure you understand the notation. Remember, if things are not very comfortable for you right now, because this is new notation, if you knew everything, you would be in the next class. So get comfortable, just take a few breaths. Remember mindfulness techniques and visualization techniques and just learn the notation to get comfortable. Evaluate the following. Your final answer should be without an exponent or a radical. So go ahead and evaluate. We'll pause. When you're done, continue and we'll share the answers. So that's the same as 3. Why is that? Because fifth root of 3 to the fifth 3 raised to 5 power gives me 3 to the 5th power. Or you can think of it as 5 fifths, or 1. Here you have 7 over 7, or a to the 1. So again, notice the connection. When you're dealing with positive real numbers, uh, when you have index and the exponent of the base on the inside match, you just end up with the variable or the number, because it's 5 fifths. 7 sevenths, uh, and so on. Why is that 7? Because 7 squared is 49.
3 cubed is 27. So now we have to think of whose square is 81. So that would be 9. And remember, negative square roots, you end up with imaginary numbers. So again, 9 squared is 81. That negative sign on the outside stays on the outside. So we have uh, a way to simplify roots and cube roots. Remember, if you have a negative inside a root, you're going to end up with an i. All right, convert each radical to an improper rational exponent and then convert proper fractional part back to radical. So the first one would look like this. So you have cube root of 2 to the fifth or 2 to the power 5 thirds, which is a mixed fraction of 1 and 2 thirds. So 2 to the 1, which is 2, and 2 to the 2 thirds is basically cube root of 2 squared or 4. So cube root of 32 simplified is 2 cube root of 4. Let's see if you can do the next one on your own. So again, remember, this one is this one. This 2 is this 2, and this 3 is this 3. So can you see that again? 1, 2, 3. OK? All right, do that on your own. Assuming you've paused and come back. So that will be a to the 9 halves. 9 halves is 4 and a half, so a to the 4, and square root a, because 1 half power means that. So again, the 4's match up, 1's match up, and the 2's there, but when it's a square root, we don't write that 2, so that's why it looks like that. All right, let's see if you can do the next one. Did your answer look like that? If not, review. 7 thirds is 2 and a third. So b to the second, and cube root. So that's why the 3 is there, and b to the 1, which is just b. And remember, if you can evaluate 2 squared, then you can. You should.